Good evening. I was going to say good afternoon, but it's a bit late for that. Um, welcome once again to my daily talk. A little bit late today, I know, and I did explain on Facebook what I was doing. This is episode number 782, and the topic today is distractions and avoidance. Well, I didn't say two, but they are ways to pretend you're not okay. So let's talk. And this is coming up a lot in conversations. In fact, one of my clients emailed me about this, so I'm sharing this today because of that. For her benefit and other people who may be watching, this may be useful to you. So before I jump into the topic, though, let me introduce myself and tell you about what I'm here for and why I do this. It's the introduction, you know, that stuff. So hi, my name is Barry Selby. If you haven't seen my talks before, I do this every day. Um, the topic today, excuse me, I keep doing that. The topic I already spoke about. Let me talk about me for a second. <laughs> I am a best-selling author of the book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. I'm also a... Uh, Passionate champion for divine feminine because I am a um, relationship attraction expert helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also an inspirational speaker and I am also something else that I forgot what I was going to talk about. Oops. Hey, Tina. Nice to see you in my broadcast. Um, so, this is episode number 782. So, a lot of these are out there, as I said, and I'll give you links to where you can find my broadcast at the back end of this broadcast. And today, I want to talk about a couple of things that I've been hearing about, one from one of my clients earlier today and also from other people I've witnessed, not necessarily talked to, but witnessed, regarding avoidance and distraction as means to pretend that you're okay. I think I said the right title. If I, if I didn't, I'll fix it. So let me jump in and start talking about this. We as a culture have a really bad habit of lying to each other. <laughs> and I mean this from the point of view that when you say to somebody like, hi, how are you doing? The response that most people come up with is, I'm fine. That term is a band-aid for so many things that aren't true. So, excuse me, so many things aren't spoken because time fine is not true. And so when I talk about avoidance and distractions, I'm speaking about how people tend in their lives to do things that maintain the facade of everything's fine. I'm okay, everything's fine, just don't look behind the mirror. Or don't, be like, don't, don't, excuse me, don't look behind the curtain. That's the wrong analogy for a second. Yeah, that's the uh, Wizard of Oz. So what I'm speaking about here is, is going to be sort of painful for some people because some people watching this are going to feel called out because I'm speaking some truth here to people who need to hear it because I'm here to help. And why I want to talk about this is because particularly I'm speaking to one of my clients who wanted me to do this for her. So she'll be watching this later on tomorrow, I think. But I want to do this for her benefit and hopefully you'll get benefit too. So I'm not going to machine names. Discretion is the word here, or confidentiality is the word. But the thing is that people have habits to avoid and, dis and to distract from things. And particularly the things I would say is, for example, avoidance in this context is for things that people do to avoid the truth, to avoid facing up to their demons, to avoid being transparent, to be vulnerable, to be humble. So they distract, sorry, they will avoid by doing things to pull themselves out of being present, which could be addictions or various forms and structures. It could be just talking about other things and and, and uh, watch people do this. Um, there's a term I think for this, but it's like having somebody who won't who who will not sit still. So there's a um, you know when you I have to use analogies. I was going to reach your analogies. So you got a, a hot pan and you and it, that's been hot on the heat for a lot for a while. You drop some a water water droplet on it and it skitters around. That's what some people do in conversations. They will always they will skid around, avoiding being pinned down because they don't want to be confronted. So they'll avoid you in their answering of your questions and will distract or bounce questions back and do other things. That's one of the ways, but as I mentioned, the other ways that predominantly happen is people tend to find themselves using addictions to avoid facing their truth. It's a challenge they go through regularly because they don't have the tools most of the time. Actually, they don't have the tools or the support to go through the healing part of their journey. Because for a lot of people, these people who are using avoidance and also distraction, is because they have some pain or wound in the past, a trauma perhaps, certainly something that wasn't enjoyable, that stuck in their past from way back when, that hasn't been resolved yet. And it's been spent, it spent the last 20, 25 years inside eating away at them. But rather than facing it, because it's such an ugly, gross, um, obnoxious thing inside they'll do other things like distract themselves from it or avoid it completely so the distraction side of things is where they will simply this put these people individual and not you but other people will focus on 
everything except what they need to focus on. There'll be things to distract them. And what happened is, and this is the thing about avoidance and distraction, it gets so skillful at it that sometimes what will happen is they won't do these things to distract themselves. They'll actually have environments around them almost respond to their need for distraction or avoidance. Meaning, for example, that if somebody is a, a, a job they hate or they're in a job position, position they want to avoid doing anything with, there'll be calls that will come in from their family or from their neighbors or from their pet setter or from somewhere else to get them to come out because they've created a reality for themselves that forces them to be distracted from the truth, to be avoidance of facing the truth. It's something that I've seen enough times to become somewhat tuned into it. I'm not saying an expert on this by any means, but I've seen it enough times to become very aware that there are people walking around with this, um, I keep seeing pictures and trying to, ana trying to create an analogy to give you to explain this better. But cre they keep creating these scenarios where they spend their time deflecting, avoiding, and just not being present to be able to have a conversation. One reason I have a, a complimentary clarity conversation with my clients before I work with them is I want to find out where they are and also to check out, see if they're actually willing to do the work to face their demons. Because for a lot of people, that's what they're doing. They're avoiding facing their demons. This, this, this ugly thing inside I talked about, this trauma, this challenge, this uh, uh, wounded experience, it's basically like a demon they don't want to face. And the challenge, though, is in relationships, one of two things happens. Actually, one of th no, one of two things happens. Either in the relationship, the next partner will actually end up facing those demons because the demons will come out in, in the middle of the relationship and blow up and cause a major upset. Or more likely, because this person who has those inside is holding them down so well, that the person who they're in a relationship with won't get to experience all of them. Because there's so much energy being pushed down and held down and all the energy used to push down and hold down that the partner is not able to express themselves fully or participate. So, let's try it again. <laughs> won't be able to express themselves fully or participate, that's the word he's looking for, fully in the relationship. And so that, that push-pull energy, and that, in fact, that avoidant energy, means that you're not gonna, not gonna have a relationship with somebody fully expressing themselves. And if you're the sort of person, you're, not, you're basically cheating your partner out of a full expression of your partnership. My encouragement to people who are dealing with this is get help. And I mean this from the point of view for your future relationships and for yourself, because when you do choose to face those demons inside and resolve them rather than avoiding them or distract yourself from them, hi Bobby, nice to see you my broadcast. Um, when you choose to, do choose to face them and you work through them with help, because it's not something you can usually do on your own, because I've witnessed this more than enough time, enough time to, to see that, then what happens is you get your life back. You actually get your energy back. You get your freedom back, so to speak. And it means when you're in a relationship, in fact, we, when you're in anywhere in the world, you'll suddenly discover that you have about 25, 30% more energy or some reference point of that much more energy available to you than you had before. You'll actually be more able to express yourself, more comfortable being present. You'll actually be more transparent and easy and more okay being vulnerable with people because there's nothing to hide. But for a lot of people, they're so ashamed, and I mean the word intentionally, ashamed, and feel guilty about that wounding inside because it often happens when they're very young. That because they were told, and it's interesting, I'm just reflecting back on, I went, Okay, sidebar. <laughs> well, it's not a spoiler. I went and saw Lion King early today. It's one reason I put my broadcast late. And I did post on Facebook. I was running a bit late because I was going to see a couple of friends of mine say, come see it with us. And I was like, two beautiful, two beautiful women invited me to go see a movie with them. Why not? So I did. And in the movie, which if you've seen The Lion King before, it's not like a brand new movie. It is a remake of the, of the animated movie. So it's no, not telling things out of, out of school. And I'm not doing any spoilers. But in the movie, there's a piece about how the shame of the secret that was falsely implanted in one of the characters' minds, I'm gonna avoid names just to keep it for those people who haven't seen the movie yet, forces them to basically become an exile and to stay away and to lie and not tell the truth because they don't wanna deal with it. That's based upon a falsehood. For those of you who carry around real wounds that are not false but are real, you may well be carrying the same wound inside, the same secret that you dare not express because the fear you have that it might hurt somebody's feelings, and particularly it might expose you to be less than you are, to be weak, be an idiot, be a liar, be a, a negative, whatever those terms are, is overriding your ability to be free. In the movie, there was a journey through which he came back to the truth and found out in fact that the, the, the belief he had was a lie anyway. But for anybody who's carrying around that burden inside, I encourage you to seek help, to get support, 
whether it's with a coach like myself or a counselor or a therapist or some environment seminar teaching where you can work through this, I'm biased, I think I, I have a pretty good skill set. To face that demon you carry inside so you can release it once and for all. It doesn't serve you to protect what isn't yours, to, that isn't yours that you need to protect. And it isn't your requirement or isn't your duty to carry that burden around like, like, you're, like you're dragging a cross behind. If you ever saw the mission, if you ever saw the mission with Robert De Niro, Nero, dragging that whole thing with him. It's kind of that myth, that idea that some of us carry our burdens forever. In fact, that's, that's funny, I've got the movie for a while. If you ever saw The Mission, a long time ago, with uh, Robert De Niro and uh, Jeremy Irons, I think, was in it. And it's a story about the, these missionaries, or these, um, was it Benedictine monks? I forget. Who basically went into the, um, the South American jungle. But what happened was, the piece I want to talk about is that the De Niro character has carried so much shame and, and guilt from his past that he wouldn't do the journey they were going on without some sort of penance. And so he basically dragged this massive, um, it was cargo netting full of this big sack full of heavy weights. Or, and basically it was, I think it was something, if I remember correctly, it was because he was a plunderer. That's right, yes. He was a plun he had plundered, he was a um, pirate. He'd stolen all this um, gold and silver. And so his penance was to drag all this gold and silver in a big sack behind him up the falls, over the hills, the mountains, everything, all the way through. And it was this thing that he'd keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, until one of the natives who had actually been um, one of the people he had stolen from cut the rope off the burden he was carrying. I'm, I'm not doing the, the, the scene justice. I highly recommend it because if you watch it, it's like a five minute clip. I highly recommend watching it because it's such a powerful piece about forgiveness. Because part of this journey, when you're releasing the stuff that is the stuff you're avoiding and distracting from, forgiveness is part of the work. And it's a big piece of the work that people gloss over. So in this movie, when that native cuts the rope that is tied to the big bag he was dragging, they then roll the bag off the cliff and it goes all the way down. And what happens is Daenerys' character finally collapses into compassion and forgiveness for himself because they forgave him. And that piece is such a visceral... Um, example, model of how forgiveness works. That if you're dealing with something like that, that burden, that 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 um, wounding that you carry forever, forgiveness is part of the work I do in my coaching because I'm not just a coach. But to get that sort of support to heal is the best way to be free. I know I skipped around in this talk, but I want that. That's what came up, so I'm sharing that now. So my encouragement to you is, if you're carrying any sort of wound that is forcing you to distract yourself from being real. If you keep saying you're fine, but you're not, if you're putting yourself in a place where you want to avoid facing the truth, it's debilitating to your health, it's debilitating to your relationships, it's debilitating to your energy. I encourage you, I invite you, I invite? <laughs> I won't demand, but I certainly encourage you highly to take steps to heal anything that's in the way. The more you can focus on healing yourself, the more you can focus on releasing that baggage you no longer need to carry, the sooner you can be free the sooner you can be whole and the sooner your energy can be restored so you can fully express yourself in the world once again it will transform every single relationship you have and that's good stuff I think I've covered that I'm, I'm just sorry I'm just scanning back over what I said to say did I hit anything I don't have a script by the way you haven't seen my broadcast before they're not scripted there's no bullet points I don't have a cheat sheet or anything I just come up with the topic and start talking and this is one of those um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, by the way, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, usually, but today's later, because I said I did, I did I'd sneak out early and went to see the, see the Lion King today. Um, hence the model in this talk. <laughs> so if you haven't seen my broadcast, I go live on Facebook on my personal page at 5 p.m. Pacific time, facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go to two places where you can find me easily. One is on my business page on Facebook, which I invite you to like, which is barryselby.author. That's where they live there. Secondly, I have a YouTube channel because always have a backup <laughs> and my YouTube channel is Barry Selby please like my YouTube channel there's a playlist on there called messages from the masculine and I invite you to watch anyone you want to watch there there's 780 plus this 782 including this one out there this one will be out there shortly um, and links and some links I'll put in the comments for you if you're, if you're dealing with some of this stuff I have a self-love guided meditation that I created that I have him up in the comments it's a it's a guided audio meditations AM and PM with a written guide that I think will change your life no, it will change your life. No thinking about it. If you're dealing with some self-love issues, this will help you with that. I'm also launching a group program, which I'm inviting some more people joining in because I'm not starting it until I get a full house. This is a group program, not a one individual program, called Coming Home to Yourself. 
And if you're facing some challenges to get home to yourself, my course will help you. That link will be in the comments too, so you can actually check it out. It's a pay what you want format because it's a beta test. So if you want to join in that, get in at the bargain price of whatever you want to pay and uh, join us for that. So I'll put the link in the comments for that one. And thirdly, I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session, a complimentary chat with me, as I mentioned, um, because if you want to find out more about my coaching, this is the best way to find out. So with that, I thank you for watching. I thank you for being with me. If there's any questions, thoughts, comments about this broadcast, please put them below and respond when I sign off. And uh, if you need any help, you can message me, message me over social media, or you can definitely check out the links I put in the comments. I thank you for watching. I thank you for being with me as always. Thanks for being with me each day. I will see you again tomorrow. Please take care of yourself, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.